and welcome to Commanding on a Budget. This week's budget pick is Viashino Heretic. This uncommon may be from an older set, but it is still very cheap. Nothing is quite like blowing up someone's caged son and making them take six for it. Today we'll be taking a look at Moggy Palace's Melek Is It Paragon list. Melek is a small body to have such a big mana cost, but his ability to copy spells is very powerful. Even the smallest, most insignificant spell becomes amazing with Melek on the board. This deck can be built for around $50. Melek benefits from the cards on top of your library, so any cards that can help you dig through or manipulate your library are even better in this deck than they would normally be. Arcanus the Omnipotent. Sir Ancestral Recall will help you draw tons of cards. Tomorrow, Azami's Familiar. If you're drawing any sort of extra cards, then this little guy will help you pick exactly what you want to draw. Blue Sun Zenith. Do you have lots of extra mana? Then this instant will give you lots more juice to win the game. Crystal Ball and Mystic Speculation. Nothing on top of your library to cast with Melek? That can be fixed. Deep Analysis and Pulse of the Grid are reusable draw power. Fact or Fiction. If you copy this card, you can give two people a headache trying to decide what to give you. Jace's Ingenuity. It doesn't do anything super cool, but it does draw three cards at instant speed. Frantic Search doesn't net cards, but is great for when you absolutely need to dig for an answer, and if you copy it with Melek, you'll net mana. Ponder. Take a look at what's coming and shuffle it in if you don't like it. Soothsaying lets you permanently have the ability to look and shuffle. Staff of Nin. Six mana is a lot, but having a colorless source of draw power that lets you pick off utility creatures is very handy. Telling Time lets you draw a card, set up your next draw, and ship that useless card to the bottom of your library. Recurring Insight will make you want to hug opponents who control a Consecrated Sphinx. Of course, red-blue can't kill much, so sometimes you have to get creative with removal, but bounce spells are much better when you get to copy them. Horde Smelter Dragon Apparently when this guy smashes artifacts, it just makes him angry or something. But we don't care about flavor, just that we hit their batter skull and now they're about to take ten to the face. Capsize. You guys know the drill. Get extra mana, make your opponents want to shred every copy of this card in existence. Prophetic Bolt. Four damage can kill a lot of good creatures, and four cards is a lot of digging to do. Vandal Blast can get rid of just one artifact on the cheap or kill everyone's artifacts. Into the Royal digs you out of bad situations with a permanent that you couldn't counter the first time it was cast, and draws a card. Hoarding Dragon. If you need some mana fixing or cards, this guy can help you out. Thought Adele Acquisitor. Your opponents have cool artifacts, but you could put them to much better use. Kazul Tyrant of the Cliffs. Unlike Propaganda, your opponents can still attack if they can't afford to pay mana, but then their creatures will pay. Burn Sweepers are even better in this deck because you can double them if you need to. Aetherize. It's like a fog and a sweeper all in one. Blasphemous Act. When your opponents get greedy with creatures, you can cast this on the cheap. Chain Reaction. Sure, it's not Wrath of God, but it's still only four mana. Evacuation. Your instant speed panic button for those times when you need a break from the beats. Slagstorm can sweep away token armies and small beaters without killing Melek. Starstorm is more mana than your other two red sweepers, but you can kill anything if you have the mana. Melek copies your spells, but sometimes the spell you want two of won't be on top of your library. At other times you'll just want two of something your opponent has cast. Twin Cast and Reverberate copy something on the cheap. Wild Ricochet. Why just copy a spell when you can also swerve the original? Reiterate, the spell copier you never have to get rid of. Increasing Vengeance only targets your stuff, but being able to flash it back and copy the spell twice instead of just once is what makes it worth it. Dual Casting turns any of your creatures into a twin cast. You can slap this on Melek and get three copies of your top of the library spells. This deck doesn't pack a ton of counters, but it does have two for those things that absolutely cannot resolve. Dissipate counters a spell and keeps it out of the graveyard. Hinder also keeps spells out of graveyards, with the bonus of keeping generals out of command zones. With Melek as a commander, it's best to play as many instants and sorceries as possible, but there are some things those two card types just can't handle. 
Is it Kirun and is it Signet give you a little mana boost so you can cast Melek faster? Mizium Transreliquat. Not only is it much more budget friendly than Sculpting Steel, you can change what it's copying whenever you want. Rune Chanter's Pike. With all those instants and sorceries filling up the graveyard, this equipment can turn Melek into a good beater. Swiftfoot Boots. Your general is very powerful and kind of fragile, so he needs as much protection as you can give him. Phyrexian Metamorph. Copy one of your utility dudes or something your opponents have. Casting a spell once is cool, copying it with Melek is crazy, but what's even better is getting it back to cast it one more time. Unlike most other decks that play creatures like Archaeomancer, spells that get spells back are better in this deck since they can be copied with Melek. Charmbreaker Devils is the one exception to this rule because you can get back a card every turn, which is great card advantage no matter what random card you get back. Diluvian Primordial can't get your spells back, but your opponents might have real removal spells that you need. Sometimes Bounce and Burn just don't cut it. Spell Twine lets you use something of yours again and, like Diluvian Primordial, lets you get better removal from your opponents. Call to Mind is a cheap one-shot recursion spell. Mystic Retrieval has flashback, which means you might be able to have the dream play of copying it with Melek and then flashing it back to get a total of three cards back to your hand for the price of one card. Past in Flames gives your stuff flashback and can be used twice. Your deck is all about casting lots of spells, and these cards are here to make that easier and more profitable. Galvanoth will let you cast spells for free, and if Melek is on the board, you'll get to double your free spell. Hypersonic Dragon is a decently sized hasty body that lets you play powerful cards like Recurring Insight whenever you want. Talran's Sky Summoner will clog up the skies with lots of annoying little drakes. Arcane Melee helps everyone at the table, but you'll benefit from it much more than anyone else. Spellweaver Volute hops around graveyards stealing whatever cool stuff you want. Every single spell in this deck will be even better if copied, but these are the spells you really, really want to double. Stolen Identity. Being able to copy a creature or an artifact and then have the option to do it every time a creature connects gets crazy. Knowledge Exploitation. You have one lone rogue, but even in the very likely event that you have to hard cast this card, you'll be happy to pay seven mana to grab the best spell an opponent has. Mana Geyser will allow you to make a ton of mana so you can sink it into an X burn spell. Devil's Play, Red Sun Zenith, and Comet Storm can finish off opponents, and if you can copy them, they might be able to finish off the whole table. Fabricate. There are only eight artifacts in this deck, but all of them are worth tutoring for. Cackling Counterpart can't copy your opponent's creatures, but you have some good creatures, or you might already have a creature you've copied that you can copy again. Acquire. There are so many good equipments, mana rocks, and other artifacts in this format, and Acquire can help you steal any of them. Heat Shimmer. Sure, you have to exile the token at the end of the turn, but this will allow you to use an Enter the Battlefield ability of someone's creature, and if Hypersonic Dragon happened to be on the board, it would be a great combat trick. The Lands. Buried Ruin, Desolate Lighthouse, Evolving Wilds, Grixis Panorama, Halimar Depths, is it Boiler Works? Is it Guildgate? Reliquary Tower? Temple of the False God? Terramorphic Expanse? And 15 Islands? And 10 Mountains? A few cards in this deck have been changed to bring it down to $50. For the complete list, which is still fairly budget friendly, see the link in the description below. Here are some of my favorite non-budget cards from that list. Mystical Tutor sets up a spell for Melek. Just remember that you don't necessarily want to cast this card when you would in any other game. niv Mizzet the Firemind is a good source of draw power and damage from all your draw spells. Darksteel Plate helps protect Melek since he'll be such a huge target. Sakashima the Impostor can copy Melek and Talrand without killing them, which means every spell you cast will be even crazier. I think that Bribery, Cryptic Command, Electrolyze, and Time Warp would also be great additions to this deck. Now for the strengths and weaknesses of the deck. For the strengths, the deck is designed to get maximum value out of every spell. It isn't heavily based on creatures, so removal hurts less than normal. It can kill opponents in one turn. Lots of draw power means you'll always have threats. The weaknesses. Melek is a huge target. 
Mana rocks would take space needed for spells so the deck can be slow to get going. There are few creatures in the deck so blockers are limited. Melek is powerful but if you don't hit spells he's not as useful. You should play this deck if you are an is it fan. You never want to cast a spell just once. You aren't a huge fan of creatures and you like playing spells on other people's turns. Thanks to Moggy Palace for sharing his Melek list and for working with me to shave off the 70 or so dollars it took to get the deck down to 50. If you want to see his original list there is a link in the description below. Both versions of this deck really take advantage of Melek's ability which takes careful building. What's your favorite card type in Commander? Let me know in the comments section below and as always thanks for watching.